So this is a project that's collaborative. We have worked with our local community, the, Leg the Canadian Legion of the Beaver Valley 281, and Veterans Affairs Canada, who generously support this project. We are going to be launching um, additional materials to our online portal, where we gather together and digitize our military collection and heritage. And this is for use and available on our virtual museum page. So I encourage you to go and check it out. We have been really pleased to help share these stories of our veterans, our community, and, our, and the impact of our military experience. So this is this portal, this or this um, online resource is really a place where we can reflect, remember, and respect the work that was done by our military veterans and our community. So throughout the month, I'm going to share some of this heritage with you live on on Facebook, and give you a little bit of the stories behind some of these individuals. And so you can check out the what we have right now on um, our online resource, because we actually have some material up already. But when I say it's a collaborative experience, um, what I'm hoping is that you and your family may have military resources to share that are about your family member who is a local veteran. And we would be really thrilled and excited to collaborate with you on this project if you're interested in letting those materials be available to the public. So many of you might have letters or images or stories and you want them to be shared. So we have an online submission form that you can use yourself or you can contact me at the museum at depot at thebluemountains.ca, that's our email. And we would love to hear from you. So our military heritage portal is on the Blue Mountains Public Library website. And you go to the museum section and then virtual museum. And this is what you'll see. So you can see that there are some collections there now. And the beauty about this site is we can include books, um, audio, visuals, all sorts of materials. So even if you have a story you want to uh, share by reading it, we would accept that too. Um, and actually be thrilled if you could. So today I'm gonna go back in time and I'm gonna focus on the 19th century when the town of the Blue Mountains was called Collingwood Township. And at that time, companies of militia volunteers were raised to assist um, British regular forces to deal with disturbances. And many members of our small rural community were involved in this. When the Fenian raids happened and the Trent Affair, it really ramped up the interest of local men to uh, form militia units. And the formation of the 31st Regiment occurred in 1866. And that's pretty significant because that was the year of the Battle of Ridgeway when um, militia units were drawn to Ridgeway, Ontario. So these kinds of disturbances provided uh, interest, uh, but we needed organization to the many scattered co companies that were around in the small communities in Gray County. So the idea was brought forward to establish company number seven in Clarksburg, and that was created in 1868. It was created with the assistance of a number of people. Joseph Rourke, a clerk and then accountant in William Marsh's store in Clarksburg, was one of the organizers behind this company. He received his commission as a captain in, in the Gray County Militia in 1858, and at that point was part of the Durham No. 4 Company until he established the, the company in Clarksburg. And he was a, a very distinguished gentleman, and I have a photograph of him here. He was a leader in his community, an accountant and conveyancer, and that's... Um, one of the first people establishing our early military. His brother, Edwin 
Edward Rourke joined in 1863 at the age of 18. And he was also part of the new militia company. Um, he had been trained in Barrie and was training um, other officers there. And he, along with Mr. Turnbull, a storekeeper in Clarksburg, also joined. And I have a picture of Edward in his uniform. It's not a great image. It's out of a newspaper, so it's a bit grainy. So Edward um, Rourke, Joseph Rourke, Mr. Turnbull, and a very significant other store clerk joined the company. And that individual was this man. Now we all know him looking like this, but this was Sam Steele. So Sam Steele was a clerk in one of the shops uh, in Clarksburg, and he also joined the company. He had been trained by Edward Rourke in Barrie. And um, so there was a, a, a connection there between the two of them. We're really pleased that the University of Alberta Press has given us permission uh, to use this book today. And uh, this book is in the library collection. So if you ever are interested in learning more about Sam Steele, a little bit about his time in Clarksburg, this is where you want to go. We also have other materials at the museum and library on Sam Steele as well. So I just want to show a photograph of him. Now, this photograph was taken about 10 years um, after Sam Steele left Clarksburg. But that's pretty close to what he would have looked like when he was living in our community. That's a picture of him, of course, not in our local militia uniform. Um, Sam Steele was an ensign with the Simcoe Foresters um, originally, but he resigned that commission to organize and train the number seven company. And as I mentioned, Edward Rourke and Sam Steele were good friends and Edward had trained him in Barrie. Of course, we all know he left to head out west and be involved in um, a number of different activities. He was working with Sir Sam Sanford Fleming on the Intercolonial Railway. He was involved in the Real Rebellion um, and of course the Yukon Gold Rush. But he did a lot of other things as well. Before he headed out west, he wrote this, and this is his words. I left there, meaning Clarksburg, after putting the company in good order and well organized, parting from them with much regret. So he certainly um, was interested in Clarksburg and the work he was doing there with everyone. So the militia company that was established, company number seven. I have an early photo of that company. And I apologize for the, the screen, but let's see if I can get a better image of that. And these images are online as well uh, on the database of photographs. So you can pull them up on our virtual museum page as well. Within two years of formation, the company actually raised enough money to purchase um, grounds for their drills. So they bought a drill ground and that was the area that later on became the Clarksburg Fairground. Uh, by 1870, they had enough money to purchase, to, to actually build a, a drill shed so that they could also drill inside throughout the winter. So they were a very committed group of people. And in, 18, in 1912, an imposing front facade was built on the building, funded by the federal government, and this became the armories. So this is what the building looked like there. Sorry. Oh. Their drill shed. So it's quite a beautiful building, stucco fa front facade, lots of windows to let in light to the drill for the drilling. The militia practiced on the grounds throughout the year and they attended the Niagara Skills uh, camp, which was set up after the Battle of Ridgeway. 
The company was also involved in the Boer War, and that was the first um, uh, engagement that they were involved in, and 30 men volunteered for service. That included Beverly Rourke, Hillard Rourke, Joseph Brown, and also Sam Steele, who at the time was in command of Lord Strathcona's horse. And he went on to serve in South Africa after the war before returning to Canada. So I have a picture of the Rourkes, um, and they were all, all these three Rourkes became lieutenant colonels. And so I have on the right is Edward, in the middle is Hillard, and to the left is Herbert, which was um, Edward's nephew. So very um, keen on supporting the military, that, that family. So that's my little bit about the local militia and the establishment of our military in, in Collingwood Township or the town of the Blue Mountains. And I want to end with a little quote from Edward Rourke because it just shows the significance of establishing this unit and how much it meant to these men. Uh, he wrote this after his appointment uh, to Lieutenant Colonel. One of the objects I had long ago set my mind on, and now that it is realized, and if I live, I will have, have it to say that I have served my country 40 years and can retire with the rank of Lieutenant Colonel to me, the highest honor. And that's what we want to do. We want to honor our, our military history, the veterans who are involved in our engagements and we're here to support our community. So thank you very much for joining me today. And if you would like to be part of our project, feel free to let me know. And thank you very much. Bye now.